Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. It's very nice to see you all. So I am going to talk a little bit about my composition practice and introduce you to a few pieces I've written in the past and then talk about the new Kalsura survey piece after that before playing it to you. So um, there are kind of two things that are really important in uh, when I approach a new composition project. One of those is place and one of those is of course is, is sound but in particular sounds from a, a particular place and my interest in place started off when I was writing purely instrumental works. I was very interested in how the concert hall kind of made certain relationships between people and how that particular place uh, made people act in a certain way. Uh, later on, I started using more electronics in my work, uh, although I still write instrumental stuff too. Um, so after looking at how concert halls were interesting to me, this expanded to how cities and the places we live were interesting to me as well. And I live in Glasgow in Scotland. And one of the things that many people know about Scotland, uh, know about Glasgow, uh, who don't live there, uh, is the fact that there is a big motorway running straight through the middle of Glasgow. And I... For many years, actually, I lived very close to this motorway. I actually lived underneath or near the bridge which takes the motorway across the River Clyde, which goes through the centre of the city. So my kind of oral awareness of the city was very much informed by this, this big road. Uh, so I'd fall asleep at night and the motorway would be there in the background. I'd wake up in the morning, the motorway would still be there <laughs> uh, with all the sounds of the cars going past, etc. Uh, walking to the local shops, I'd have to pass underneath the motorway with its uh, big bassy rumbling sounds as the lorries run over and things like that. So um, I became very interested in why this motorway was, was put there. So who thought it was a good idea to run a motorway through the middle of a city? So I got an opportunity a few years ago to write a piece of music for Red Note Ensemble, who are an ensemble based in Scotland. They're officially based in Edinburgh, which is very close to Glasgow. And I thought I'd write a piece of music about this very thing, about how we have a motorway that, that goes through the middle of the city. And it, it really divides the city into two. It's difficult to cross. Um, and it kind of impinges on every bit of, of city life. So. I went about making this, this new piece of music. Um, the final work was called Elbow Room, and the word Elbow Room, uh, it derives from uh, a phrase that was used at the time about how the redevelopments of Glasgow within the 20th century were going to give people more space to live and, and more space to breathe, uh, etc. So there are kind of three strands I took when I was writing this piece of music. The first was a kind of psychogeographic approach, which basically involves thinking about how the city makes you feel. And one way to, to kind of uh, work on this strand is by taking very, very long extended walks, kind of aimless walks through the city. And this is something I did quite a lot in the run-up to writing this, this piece of music. Uh, the second approach I took was to make lots of location recordings. So I'd take my sound recording equipment on these long walks. I would also record all over the place uh, within the city. Um, I record on every time I took a, a bus or a train, I'd make a recording of, of the conversations I heard around me uh, and things like that. Um, and the, the third kind of strand of, uh, of interest I took was to do lots of research. So lots of archival research, lots of library research. Um, and eventually all these strands started to kind of pull together and weave together into a piece of music. Um, one thing I found was that the archival research uh, and looking in, uh, for example, the, the old plans for Glasgow and reading what the architects wanted to create in Glasgow, uh, I started to hear how these developments were sounding in the city in the present day. So you could kind of hear in certain parts of the city sounds that related directly to the plans that were made in the middle of the 20th century. So um, I should say that this, this piece that I ended up creating was scored for an instrumental ensemble and for video. And the the video was made from two archival films I'd found uh, during my research. Um, 
Both of them were created by the local town council to try and persuade Glaswegians that all the redevelopments in the city were going to be worth their while. Um, because not only were they building a motorway, uh, the original plan was to knock down the entire city and to rebuild it from scratch. So in the 1940s, there was a man named Robert Bruce who thought that was a great idea. And there are some amazing uh, models of the new city. It's completely unrecognizable. You wouldn't recognize uh, the city at all uh, from looking at these models and these, and these maps and plans. So these films were made originally um, by the council to try and persuade Glaswegians that uh, the plans were going to be fantastic. And there's one film in particular called Glasgow 1980. And in Glasgow 1980, it's, it was shot by um, a wonderful documentary photographer called Oscar Mazzaroli and it tells about how the 10 years of, of pain from 1970 to 1980 that Glaswegians will have will all be worth it in the end because their new city is going to be wonderful and sparkling bright and uh, full of health and, and, and wellness for everyone. Um, it probably doesn't need me to tell you that that didn't quite work out as the planners envisaged. And I think a lot of the, the things in the piece that I was interested in was how people's imagination is different from reality and how these, these plans change. Um, so the reason why I'm telling you about this piece is because the three kind of ways of researching this idea and thinking about music in relation to it was um, it's something I've kind of kept with me for, for most recent pieces as well. So for example, the one you hear later tonight, a similar kind of process. Um, but let me play for you a little bit from this piece of music, Elbow Room. Um, the whole piece is about 40 minutes long, but I'm going to play a shorter section, about, about six or seven minutes. Um, just so you know, what we see on the, on the screen there is a video recording and the ensemble are on stage and in front of them there's a big gauze screen and on top of the screen is projected all these uh, video images from, from archival films. Um, we've also got lighting on the band so that you can sometimes only see the band and sometimes only see the film. Um, it doesn't come across brilliantly in the video but you get the idea. So this is a, a short excerpt of a piece I wrote in 2014. Uh, this is performed by Red Note Ensemble.
1960, work began on the biggest urban redevelopment program in Europe, a 20-year program involving five square miles, a twelfth of the city's area. Between 1960 and 1970, 52,000 houses were demolished in Glasgow. A further 75,000 are scheduled for demolition up to 1980. To make room for new life in the city, for new houses, industries, schools and colleges, hospitals, social and cultural amenities, for new roads linking a planned and integrated community. Noise, dust, confusion, the sometimes painful transformation of familiar landmarks. But Glasgow's future is planned out in the heads of planners, stage by stage modelled in balsa and plastic, presented to the public and their representatives, argued and approved.
So you may have noticed some of the sounds in there were kind of heavily inspired by really stereotypical 1980s <laughs> pop music. And, and the reason for that was that whilst the film was made in the 19, 1972, I think, 1972, uh, it looks forward to a kind of 1980, an imaginary 1980 in the planners' heads. So I thought I'd take the opposite approach and create an imaginary 1980 soundtrack from my position in 2014 when I wrote that. Now, I, even though I was born in the 1980s, I can't remember them <laughs> because I was too young. So this it was a kind of a, a recreation of what I imagined <laughs> the sounds uh, from that time would have been like. And there was one moment in the score, I wrote an instruction to the, the keyboard player who's about the same age as me. And I described the sound I wanted as something which came from a, a children's television program from when we were younger. And he crea created that sound perfectly on the keyboard. This first thing he played me was absolutely perfect. But then a few months later, after we'd done all these performances, I found some of that TV program on YouTube and the music was not at all what we remembered. It was completely different. And we have this kind of collective misremembering of what had happened uh, in the 1980s. So uh, I think that there are a few things from this piece which I took forward into more, more recent pieces. Uh, firstly, is that thing about reality and, and fantasy and, and the real and the imagined. I think these things are quite important in my composition practice generally. Um, there are some more kind of... Um, some, some, some other kind of themes which began to emerge as well. Firstly, of course, this idea of uh, sustainability and environmental sustainability, as you sometimes call it. So the fact that a motorway was built in in the 1970s in Glasgow meant, of course, that the car became king and we kind of entered into an era of entrenched petroculture. So we were, you know, the, the, as you probably saw from the film, the many people who lived in the centre of Glasgow were moved to the outskirts of Glasgow, which required them to commute more to go to work. And of course, they had to take a car because the trains were, weren't running there, etc. So I was interested in how that someone's ideas, because these ideas originated in the 1940s, so how someone's idea back then affects our life today, uh, and particularly the way that we, uh, we kind of power our lives with oil or, or with electricity or, or whatever. Um, so that's what, one kind of thing which was, was quite an important uh, change for me in the way I approached uh, pieces of music. Um, the other thing which was very informative about making this piece was just the idea of making something strange through writing a piece of music about it. Um, we performed this piece in Glasgow elsewhere, but in, in Glasgow mainly, and um, it was really intriguing to me how making a piece of music about something so familiar made people think about us in a different kind of way. Uh, I think one of my happiest moments from this whole project was after our last performance in Glasgow, going to the bar afterwards and, and seeing two people I didn't know talk about the, how cities are planned and how we move around a city, and I thought that was uh, very empowering that a piece of music could do that. Um, so the idea of making something strange in order for us to think about it in a different way became quite central to a lot of what, what I do as a composer. So the second piece, uh, oh, I should show you this. By the way, this is, <laughs> this is the old piece. Uh, this is two stills from the video. This was from the original film in 1980, uh, the 1980 film made in 1972. Uh, and that explains how the work is kind of almost complete. We've just got to finish this bit of motorway. And this is how it still looks today. This is what I added at the end of our piece, which is, of course, exactly the same. And it's the idea of this, uh, this utopian dream has, has been incomplete. And uh, I thought that was quite telling <laughs> about the city. So anyway, uh, the, the, the second piece I want to talk to you about. Uh, this is a collaborative project with a visual artist, uh, Hannah Imlach, who makes sculpture. And we made this piece of work in Banff in Canada. And we were there on a residency discussing uh, petroculture with a lot of very interesting artists and academics. And I suppose you go to these things taking a lot of baggage of your homeland with you, because whilst everyone else was there making work about oil, um, we were making work about wind, because in Scotland we have a lot of wind. And a lot of our renewable energy projects are powered by wind, as you would expect, a lot of offshore and onshore um, in Scotland. So even though we made this project um, about, well, in Banff, it was kind of actually about uh, a place in Scotland. 
I should say briefly that this is, the reason why it's called Alien Survey Sketch is because this is still officially a proposal for work that we haven't actually properly finished yet. This is a, this is a 3D rendering of what a sculptural object could look like. And the sound I'm going to play you is a kind of a, a mock-up of what this, this object will make. And I'll explain more about that in a second. So, as I said, this work is actually inspired by, by another place in Scotland called the Isle of Egg, E-I-G-G, -G, which is just off the west coast of Scotland. And it's, a, it's quite a small place. It's a very, very beautiful island. It's a very small population of about 100 people who live there. And the remarkable thing about the Isle of Egg is that in the late 1990s, the inhabitants bought the island themselves from the landowner who had previously owned it. Now, before they were able to have this community buyout, the, all their power was provided by diesel generators, very, very noisy, very, very polluting, etc. And the community buyout enabled them to install a brand new uh, renewable energy system on their island. So, for example, they have uh, wind turbines, they have hydroelectric power, uh, and they also have um, solar panels as well. Uh, one of the things which uh, was intriguing to us about this place is that um, firstly, of course, by having their own energy system, it gives them a, a kind of a moral sense of the energy they use. It gives them a lot of uh, information about, and they're very, very conscious about the amount of energy they use. For example, power is rationed up on, on the island. Uh, you can't, for example, run a dishwasher at the same time as doing a television or something because there's not enough power. So the inhabitants are very, very aware uh, just about how much they're using and also how much the island is generating because it was fascinating to find out that um, on the Isle of Egg, if it's been raining, if you can hear the rain hitting your roof uh, continuously, you know that the weir at the top of the hill is going to be full and therefore you're going to have more power because the hydroelectric will go, go into overdrive and you know that you can maybe do some more washing that day because there's going to be more electricity available to you. And this relationship between kind of energy usage and sound uh, was really intriguing to us. So we came up with this. And this is, this is very simply an alien harp, which I'm sure many of you have seen before. It's essentially a harp that's played by the wind. And whereas a lot of music and a lot of sounds that are created with alien harps tend to, to be quite soft. Uh, I'm kind of uh, generalizing here slightly, of course, but uh, the, the sound is often uh, quiet, a bit like a wind chime almost kind of, uh, I wanted to do the opposite of that. I wanted to create something which would uh, kind of show the potential of this renewable energy source. Um, so therefore, you'll hear in the piece, there's a lot of kind of distorted sounds, almost like an electric guitar-like sounds, which are caused by uh, this alien harp kind of setup. Um, the final thing about this piece, which we thought was intriguing, which is why it's called Alien Survey, is the idea of a kind of mapping exercise, which is, you know, how could we find out more about the energy that we use um, in our daily lives through sound. And in the idea for this particular piece, the sound of the harp itself is intermingled with uh, recordings of the energy usage that happens inside the building that the sculpture sits on top of. So here we are on top of one of the buildings in the Banff Centre. And there are recordings, there are several recordings kind of mixed in. Uh, the one that's most obvious. It's a very, very simple sound, but it's, it's the sound of fluorescent lights flicking on and off. Uh, so you'll hear that a little bit. Um, so yeah, so in a way, it's a kind of uh, a sculpture that talks about the creation and the consumption of, of electricity through sound. Uh, I'll just play you a little bit of this as now. This is about six minutes or so long.
So this brings me on to uh, the new piece, uh, Karlsruhe survey. Um, again, this piece is um, kind of about energy and power in, in, this, in this city, which you all know far better than I do as, as a visitor here. Um, so as you know, this was created for the My Cities, My Sounds app. So it was uh, intended to be, uh, I should say there are seven small pieces within this larger work and each was meant to be heard in a specific place. Um, again, this is mainly through headphones because uh, the way the app works. So it's a kind of stereo uh, thing which we're doing in this room today. Um, each work is about a particular location and I used the same kind of techniques I did with Elbow Room. So this was visiting the places, doing a lot of walking around Kazra and uh, doing a lot of kind of research as well. So I was here, um, I think last, the end of August, beginning of September last year, and spent a lot of time um, wandering around, getting to know this, this town. Uh, and it's a really fascinating place. Um, I think everything I'm about to tell you, you probably already know, <laughs> uh, but it's a fascinating place in that there are so many different types of energy production here in the city. Or, so we have, of course, the, uh, the surprisingly young coal powered, coal fired power station. Um, it was quite surprising how young that facility is. There's also the end of the uh, Transalpine oil pipeline, which comes through here. Um, and as of course, you know, there's lots of solar stuff as well uh, and a wind turbine, etc. So I visited these sites um, in a kind of a, in an attempt to kind of sonify what's there and when I say kind of sonification it's not about necessarily data sonification but more sonifying what these installations mean and what kind of social relationships they form. Uh, I was also kind of interested in how this take a more fantastical approach uh, to uh, to this process by kind of imagining how other energy could be created uh, by what's here already. So there were, as I said, seven sites. I'm going to kind of talk briefly about them very, very quickly each, um, just so we kind of know where, where these things are made. So uh, the first one, this map, I mean, it's not very clear where we are. This is um, essentially on top of the pipeline, on top of the oil pipeline, uh, which is just a wood, a very, very beautiful wood. and. Of course, you can't see anything of the pipeline really when you're in the woods. So the, the idea behind the piece is not necessarily talking about what you can see, but more about what you can't see, what's hidden, what kind of uh, energy infrastructure is in the area uh, that we can't see. Um, so this was, of course, about the pipeline. The, 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 musically speaking, the, the sounds were kind of based around the speed that the oil travels through this pipeline, uh, which kind of suggests a certain motion from one side uh, of, the, of the audio spectrum to the other. Um, also, the kind of materials we hear are all based around plastic, um, of course, with its relationship to, to crude oil, etc. So that kind of uh, suggests the material and, of course, the material of the pipe itself uh, these are made of steel, so there's a kind of metallic sound as well. So, you know, the infrastructure we can't see kind of inspires the, the sound that we can hear. Um, the next one, yeah, this is, a, this is a, where are we? Okay, that's a school, <laughs> so I think, or a college. Uh, anyway, there's, there's solar insulation on the roof. Uh, of course, um, it's all very well integrated into the city, and of course, this is very pragmatic, but it means we can't necessarily see this infrastructure on our day to day lives. So, um, there's a piece of music um, based around solar panels. I'll talk more about that in a second because there are a few of these installations. So, this one here is in the, in the park uh, near the zoo. Um, I was astonished by the number of cyclists here. And this, isn't, this is probably not at all surprising to you. <laughs> but as a visitor to, this, to, the, to the city, it's, uh, it's wonderful to see so many people cycling. No, there aren't as many cyclists in Scotland at all. And that's mainly because there's no infrastructure to, to, to do that. So there is no segregated cycle lanes, for example. Um, so not only was it very encouraging to see this and, and make me a bit jealous of people who live in this town, actually, um, it also made me think about what kind of power is inherent as an energy production could potentially be inherent in, in the bicycle already and what happens if you 
for example, in some kind of fantasy world, created dynamos on every bicycle which powered the devices we have. So uh, that kind of inspired this one. There's a second one about a bicycle as well, just about the, the, the physical energy required uh, to make the thing move. Uh, and again, how that could be used to, um, uh, to kind of charge devices, etc., in this kind of fantasy uh, version of Karlsruhe. Um, this one here is, oh yeah, this is on top of the hospital. There's another um, solar array, you know, which again, we can't see from the ground level. Uh, this one here, oh yeah, this is a swimming pool, <laughs> again, with more solar panels on top of the swimming pool. Again, it's something you can't see, uh, generally speaking. Um, and this one here is, this is the, what's, the, what's it called, the energy berg. This is the, where there's a, a, a wind turbine, etc. This is very close to the, uh, the coal power station as well, um, interestingly enough. So there were two further sites which I didn't, I really wanted to make work about, but actually found it quite hard for various reasons, mainly musical reasons. So this version here, uh, this one at the top there, that's of course where our, uh, the, the power station is. And then underneath the railway here, with the, with the, the road tunnel that goes underneath, I really like the acoustic of that tunnel um, and the, the various transport modes across uh, and, and through. Unfortunately, I, I just couldn't make the piece work <laughs> for that. So this was kind of one piece that didn't make it to the final cut. Um, the final thing I should say, this, yeah, you heard me talk a lot about uh, solar panels and, and the sonification of solar panels. Now, whilst you can create some sounds out of solar panels, um, if you wire them, well, incorrectly. Um, the sounds are quite generic in terms of, you know, they create quite a standard kind of electricity sounding uh, sound. So what I thought I'd do is take a different approach to this, um, this way of, sort of sonifying that particular energy source. So this here is a, what's known as a Crookes radiometer. I think it was invented in 1870 something or other by uh, Sir William Crookes. And it's a very early way of measuring um, uh, sunlight, basically. So in the middle of the sphere here, uh, there's a partial vacuum, and the more sunlight there is, the faster the veins inside spin. And now this itself doesn't make any sound, um, unless you use contact microphones to kind of pick up what's going on inside. So I've chosen to use this, uh, the sound of this thing spinning, to kind of represent the, the solar kind of activity in the solar panels that are on top of many of the buildings here in Karlsruhe. So um, that's all I'm going to say about this piece. Um, you'll have to kind of imagine these places whilst we hear them in this room. Um, but there are, as I said, there are seven short pieces in all. There's about half an hour's worth of music. And uh, yeah, we'll think we'll hear that now. Oh, thanks. <laughs>